Hey there, Tex here with you. And in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you how to trade or how to identify the Wyckoff accumulation zone, which I believe we have just broken out into. I am officially bullish after quite a, a long time of being bearish. I am officially bullish. So I think it's really important now to understand some of the fundamentals of this Wyckoff schematic, the Wyckoff accumulation zone. In this video, we will be looking just at accumulation. In a second video, I will explain the markup phase, which I do believe we are are in now, as well as the distribution and mark down range of the Wyckoff schematic or the overall Wyckoff thought. So first, it's really important to understand what is Wyckoff when what is the Wyckoff method? Well, it was developed by Richard Wyckoff in the early 1930s. It consists of a series of principles and strategies initially designed for traders and investors. Wyckoff dedicated a significant part of his life to teaching and his work impacts a lot of modern TA today from almost 100 years ago to now. We are still using the principles that Wyckoff came up with in the early 30s. Now, he's considered a titan of the stock market trading area, the original OG, uh, one of the very few OGs in comparison in, in collection with guys like Charles H. Dow and Ralph and Elliot. Uh, a lot of his work was inspired by the trading methods of those guys and in particular, Jesse L. Livermore. Uh, and he's now held in the same regard as these guys. So he did a lot of extensive research, which led to the creation of several theories and trading techniques. And we're going to go over that in this first video and second video as well. So the ultimate theory was his price market cycle. We know that the market works in waves of oversold and overbought conditions. And Wyckoff put together all these theories to create this Wyckoff method. So we're going to look at some of the fundamental laws of trading, the, fundamental, the composite man concept, which I absolutely love. That's a brilliant way for retail investors to look at the market, a methodology for analyzing charts, which is the Mykoff schematic, and a five-step approach to the market in this first video. So he also developed specific buying and selling tests, as well as a unique charting method based on point and figure, PNF charts, what they're called. And while these tests help traders to spot better entries, the PNF method is used to defining targets, but we won't really be going over that in this or subsequent videos. So the first law of Wyckoff, well, it's that when demand or when buyers are more than sellers, price increases. And when sellers are more than buyers, when supply is larger than demand, price drops. When there's an equilibrium between the two, we see low volatility and not much of a significant price drop or increase. That's pretty standard stuff. The second law is the law of cause and effect. And this states that the difference between supply and demand are not random. Instead, they come after periods of preparation as a result of specific events. And in Wyckoff terms, period of accumulation, cause, lead to an uptrend, which is an effect. So cause and effect. For every action, there is a reaction. And in contrast, a period of distribution at the top of this logic then ultimately relates to a downtrend or a markdown, which I'll explain in these two videos. So the third law is the law of effort and result. And what does that mean? Well, this law states that the change in an asset's price are results of an effort, which is represented by trading volume. If the price action is in harmony with the volume, there's a good chance the trend will continue. But if the volume and price diverge significantly, the market trend is likely to stop or change direction. So let's use an example. Uh, Bitcoin market starts to consolidate with very high volume after a bearish trend. This is what we would be looking for here, the high volume order is also indicates big effort. The sideways movements or low volatility suggests a small result. So there's a lot of Bitcoins changing hands, but no more significant price drops. And such a situation could indicate the start of an accumulation range and that the downtrend may be over, which we're going to go through in just a second. But first, I think it's really important and you can read all about this at Unity Trading Group forward slash Wyckoff, where we talk about Wyckoff's composite man. And I absolutely love this. I really, really love it. So Wyckoff created this idea of the composite man or the composite operator, which you might have heard as well as an imaginary identity of the market. And what he proposes is that investors and traders should study the stock market as if a single entity was controlling it, which would make it a lot easier for them to go along with market trends. And what does that mean? Well, we've got to put ourselves in the minds of the whales, the multimillionaires and the largest bag holders of an asset or the people with a lot more disposable income than us and trade and think in the same way that they do. 
as retail traders, we're the ones getting burnt. We're the small fish. We're the bag holders at the end of the day when they're ready to dump on us. So if we flip our mentality and start thinking like this composite man or this single entity that's controlling the market in their own best interests, then we're one step ahead of probably 90% of retail traders that are thinking in their own self-interests. So let's use this composite man to illustrate a cycle consisting of four main phases being the accumulation, the markup or the uptrend, the distribution and the downtrend. And as I mentioned, I'll get to this in a second video. So let's have a look now at the accumulation schematic. And we'll use this chart as a point of reference. This was a chart that we had done up on the 13th of January with some predictions on where we thought things would go. Uh, 8727 was uh, where I thought this, this sort of immediate run would go if we broke 82 or this immediate trading range. Uh, and we're at 8745 right now after a little top here at uh, 8871. So very close using this accumulation and zone and this Wyckoff or the first part of this Wyckoff's schematic. So let's have a look at phase A. There's five phases, A through E, one, two, three, four, five. Phase A is when the selling force decreases and the downtrend starts to slow down. So we know from here, although we are in an overall macro bearish downtrend because we're making lower highs, I think at least in this point now, I am very much bullish. I do not think we will see 6.5, 6.4 again. I think that was... Uh, a potential buying opportunity that maybe many had missed, uh, but certainly in the, the immediate term, we will not be revisiting that point again. So what happens is that this buying effort slows down. We have what is called here our preliminary support. So this is when some buyers start to enter the market. We start getting a little bit more sort of interest in seeing if this downtrend will hold, but it doesn't work. So what happens here is we reach a selling climax. This is a capitulation for the retail traders and it is exactly what the whales want to see. They want traders to FOMO sell, uh, panic sell rather, where they're waiting with money on the sidelines ready to buy. And that can also be indicated there. We had a pin bar at the bottom of this first touch within this trading range, uh, which indicates that we had a fair bit of selling pressure, but quite a bit of that was bought up. So this selling climax is formed when intense selling activity, uh, such as it, either investors or retail traders capitulate. It's a point of high volatility where panic selling creates big candlesticks and wicks. The strong drop quickly reverts into a bounce or an automatic rally. So the automatic rally is uh, the excessive supplies absorbed by the buyers. As people are, are selling, people are buying pretty rapidly as well. And in general, the trading range of the accumulation schematic is defined by the space between the selling climax and the AR high or the automatic rally high. Although we do have a secondary line here as well, you will see as we've done here in phase B, we can get a breakout above the immediate trading range, which was created by the automatic rally. In this case, we did not necessarily get that. Uh, the, the markets are not always going to work like this. They often uh, repeat, but uh, they don't often repeat, but they do rhyme as the saying goes. So there will be a lot of similarities in the markets, but it's not always going to play out exactly like this. So as the name suggests, the secondary test here happens when the market drops near the selling capitulation region, testing whether the downtrend is really over or not. But at this point, the trading volume and market volatility tend to be lower, which we certainly saw here from this point here with an increased buying and selling pressure, certainly. Uh, and while the, uh, the, the secondary test often forms a higher low in relation to this uh, selling climax, it might not always be the case. So we can sort of see here, this certainly played out uh, very well. So phase B, what is phase B? This certainly is the largest accumulation range for the whales to so be buying up Bitcoin or the asset before what's called a spring and then our move in, ultimately our move into our markup. So I guess phase B could be seen as the cause, the major accumulation range that leads to the effect being the markup or the breakout of this range and high amount of bullish momentum. So this is the biggest consolidation stage. Uh, and within here, there may be a number of secondary tests during phase B. And in some cases, they may produce higher highs, creating some bull traps and lower lows, creating bear traps in relation to the selling climax 
and the automatic rally within range A. So we've got our range established here and we're going to have potentially some bull and bear traps in here just to try and shake out the last weak hands before buying more uh, to create this ultimately this, this markup. And we can see it here as well. We actually had almost exactly that. Pretty profound, isn't it, when we look at this? So phase C, uh, this and a typical accumulation phase C contains what's called spring. So that often acts as the last bear trap before the market starts making higher lows. And during phase C, the composite man ensures that there is little supply left in the market, uh, meaning that the ones that were ready there to sell did. So the spring often breaks the support levels to stop out traders and mislead investors. And we may describe it as a final attempt to buy shares at a lower price before the up trend starts and the bear trap induces retail investors to give up their holdings and that's certainly what happened here we had a little bit of a, a quite an aggressive sell-off i suppose there for most retailers who are, are panic selling yet again almost like a mini selling climax and that's the last point for the whales to buy up this asset or in this case bitcoin before we start having a, a significant move upwards which we did so in some cases, though, the support levels will manage to hold. Uh, the spring simply doesn't occur. So we don't always get this point here. But in other words, there might be an accumulation schematic that presents all other elements, but not the spring. But overall, this schematic is still valid. And if we look here, uh, we had a number of points of last points of support. In this case, we only had one. So there might be a couple of shakeouts here. But in this case, we just had the one. So phase D, what is phase D? Uh, and as I mentioned, LPS is our last point of support before a, another run upwards. So phase D represents the transition between the cause and the effect. So typically phase D shows a significant increase in trading volume, which we certainly saw here as the market or before the market moves higher. We're creating another set of higher lows before we get this markup. So this indicates a sign of strength which is D here, certainly a sign of strength, a heightened increase in buying volume. But despite somewhat confusing terminology as well, there may be one more or multiple lower points of support in or last points of support in phase D. They often have increased trading volume while testing the new support lines. In some cases, the price may create a small consolidation zone before effectively breaking the bigger trading range and moving to phase E. So we can see here this first trading range was respected, broken. Uh, the second trading range created by this automatic rally uh, was again broken. And we had a support resistance flip here. What was uh, resistance now becomes support. And this last point of support before the, the buy up or the break up and our sign of strength before our markup. So phase E is the last stage of the accumulation schematic. It's marked by an evident breakout of the trading range caused by an increased market demand. And this is where the trading range is effectively broken and the up trend starts. So there we are. It's pretty incredible stuff how this has played out. Where to from here? Well, in the second video, I'll show you some of my thoughts and where we may be in fact headed. Looking at this, I'm sure you could probably have a little bit of a guess, but it's very important now to be able to understand how to trade this run up, this markup or this effect before getting to what we see as the buying climax and the distribution range for a potentially a move down. Will we range in this zone for 2020? My thought is yes. Uh, but it's, it's very important to identify these ranges before moving on and trading this markup. Hope you enjoyed this. Please stay, to, stay tuned for video two. Uh, leave your comments and questions below. Certainly happy to answer them for you. And you can join us over in Discord at unitytradinggroup.com. Hope you enjoyed this. See you in video two.